if you remember in a past video, I had a problem with my high side port, so I replaced that. I refilled the system with refrigerant. Everything was working good for about a week or so. And then I realized that my AC was starting to get a little bit hot again. So I knew I had a leak. I didn't put any UV dye in it, so I couldn't, you know, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to find it. But luckily I heard a hissing coming from under the, or near the accumulator. And it turned out to be the Schrader valve on the accumulator. So instead of just replacing that valve, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the whole accumulator. And since I'm already working on those lines right there and it's gonna be empty, I'm gonna replace the orifice too. Here's the one I bought. Um, I ordered the wrong accumulator the first time. Apparently there's two different styles. There's one that has the stud on top and then there's one that has the stud to the side or where the stud goes to the side. And um, the only difference is the, the last number on those two parts. So make sure you check and see which one you have on your car before you order it. Uh, it comes with these two washer seals on there and uh, it just has a little note letting you know that you have to take that stud off your old accumulator and put it into the new one. We'll be putting a link in the description of this video for every part that I bought, including the wrong part. As always, the first step you wanna take when working on your AC uh, and taking it apart is you wanna ev uh, evacuate your system properly and not just release it out into the air. So I took off this pressure switch first because I thought it was the problem. It wasn't, it was this Schrader valve. As you can see, there was oil uh, leaking from that valve. There's a uh, little Schrader valve that goes in, in there in that uh, accumulator. So that's what was leaking. And as you can see, it kind of sprayed out. I was just making sure it was empty at the end. First step I took to getting the accumulator off after the uh, pressure switch is this, uh, there's a little 10 millimeter bolt and the clamp that holds that on. I couldn't get it with just the long socket. So I had to use the short socket with an extension and go under the uh, pressure line right here. As you can see, go under that. I got a good angle, got that loose. So with the half inch socket, I uh, loosened up the front bolt leading on to the accumulator. These bolts are on going onto studs that are screwed into the accumulator. Uh, well, at least this one here is right here on the front. Uh, you're gonna have to replace that or put it onto the new one. So keep that in mind. The other one up top is on a stud, but the stud is on a piece that's inside the car. So you shouldn't have to worry about that one. I got that front line off I went and put it behind the dipstick just to keep it out of the way while I was pulling out the accumulator and then right now I started working on the orifice tube because I'm gonna probably have to get that out the way in order to get this accumulator out so that's a half inch bolt took that one off um, there's two other you're gonna need some opening wrenches to get the other parts off show you that in a second the bigger nut size is going to be seven eighths that's the one towards the firewall and then the front smaller one is going to be three fourths since i only have this wrench in those sizes and they're on the same thing i had to use two adjustables the bigger one you want to turn that one towards the engine and once you get that loose you can take that off and now you can remove your accumulator uh, if you're gonna be reusing that heat shield or thermal shield, you wanna go ahead and make sure you don't rip that. The orifice tube is located within this line. You will need a set of needle nose pliers in order to grab it and pull it out. It's kinda tough getting it out, but I got it out with a little bit of damage. Glad I'm not putting it back in. Uh, it's dirty, sludgy. Go ahead and compare it to the new one. Make sure it's the same part. And uh, when putting on the new one, recommend putting some pag oil around that little rubber ring to help it slide in. So 
So I got this far through when I realized that my old one had the stud off to the right, to the side, like I was saying earlier, and the new one had it off to the top. So like I said, I ordered a new one, got it off to the side. I'm not sure the difference between these two. Um, maybe somebody could tell me. So when the new one came, I went ahead and took the stud off and screwed it back into the uh, new one. It is a 7 30 seconds socket size. I believe that's how you say it. 7 slash 32. Uh, it was a little fourth drive. Last time I was working on my AC, I realized the drain for the evaporator was not facing down properly. So it was dripping down onto an electrical connection. So be sure that that faces down towards the pan so it can drain correctly. Uh, at this time, I went ahead and put the pressure switch onto the accumulator. It was a new one already before, so I knew that wasn't the problem. It was just the Schrader valve and the old uh, accumulator, more than likely. Uh, be sure to push down on this to uh, at least get it on the threads. I'm sorry, I didn't get the exact size on this uh, switch as far as the wrench because I used the uh, adjustable just make sure that you don't tighten it up too tight because it is plastic. And then at this time, before putting it back in, go ahead and put your pag oil in there. I got some with some dye in it. Uh, you want to look up the specifications on how much oil to add to whatever part you're putting in. So go ahead and look that up uh, and change out these uh, rings, seal rings on the uh lines there's going to be one on the back side and then one on this front part right here the uh accumulator already has one on there so i don't know i guess the ones that came in the package are extra i went ahead and placed that line back behind the uh oil dipstick so i could drop this accumulator in and place that on the stud from the evaporator I did not get to uh, reuse the thermal heat shield because I tore it up too bad. It doesn't seem like it uh, will make a difference. I don't have headers or anything, but I'm sure engineers put it on there for a reason. So we'll see what happens. Gonna go ahead and put these bolts back on, tighten those up, and then uh, get my accumulator or my orifice tube line back in. This line has uh, seals as well, rubber uh, O-rings and everything else. So if you want to replace those at this time, go ahead and uh, search for those and replace that. Be a good time to do it since it's all open. I don't know the exact torque specs on here. I just went ahead and tightened it as tight as I could. I didn't overdo it. Uh, just gonna see if it leaks, you know, since I have the die in there now. This connection right here is like kind of tricky. You gotta make sure you get that back in straight. So you don't strip these uh, threads. Once again, here's the sizes for those. Once I got everything back uh, together, I vacuumed the system and then started the refill. I'm not a professional at this, but I, I use a bowl of water or warm water from the sink, not like off the stove or anything, just to make sure that that bottle doesn't, you know, freeze up or get cold like it usually does. So that can get out. Um, it's all going in, the compressor's kicking on and everything. My compressor's definitely going out. I can hear it uh, knocking or ticking. So I'll just save up and have one on standby. But until then, I wanted to see if it was gonna uh, be the problem that was where the leak was coming from. But it's not, as you can see, it's dry. There's no leak com leaks coming from that. So 
uh, we're good. It's been about two weeks, so my AC is still blowing cold. If anything else happens, I'll up update you guys and be making a video on that fix. So thanks for watching.